In this quick start video, we're going to take a look at extending our scene that we've already created and adding a few more render elements, exploring the extra text node, increasing samples and render quality, as well as making sure that we render out all the channels we've created with the V-Ray render elements, and then also how to rebuild in a most basic form uh, and manipulate the channels after we've already got a render. So I'm starting with the same scene we used in the quick start tutorial for lighting. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit so we can get down to talking a little bit more in depth about the actual rendering process. So, get rid of that. so I'm just going to delete a few of these lights and I'll move this rect light so we have a clearer view of what it's contributing and make it invisible. So we talked in the other quick start videos about render elements, which we've created a set here, multi matte, diffuse, reflection, specular, and z-depth. And we've talked about how to assign material properties so that the material ID would come through in the multi matte render element. We'll just look at the multi matte render element really quick, make sure that that's working. That is indeed working. So now I'm going to add a really cool node called the V-Ray Background node. And we'll add that to the BG input of the V-Ray renderer. And we're going to add a constant and color it yellow so we can see exactly what we're contributing to the scene. So. The V-Ray background node is cool in that you can affect the background, the global illumination, the reflection, or the refraction of the entire scene through this node. We'll make the V-Ray light dome invisible. And then we'll pipe the constant into the BG of the V-Ray background. So now you can see that we have a background that is yellow, but the lighting of the object is from our V-Ray light dome. So if we wanted to not have a V-Ray light dome or just have the yellow uh, background contribute to the entire scene, we could disconnect the V-Ray light dome. And now you can see that, that the yellow is doing a constant illumination like an ambient light is for the entire scene. And we can change this to not be the background. We can change it to be the, just be the reflection. We see the reflection in the glossy materials but it doesn't contribute to the background or to the lighting. So now let's check out how it can contribute to global illumination. So if I plug that in and I'm not seeing any contribution, what I can do is go over here and make sure in my V-Ray renderer that the global illumination is checked. So now we get to see the yellow sort of bouncing in and anywhere that the V-Ray light rect is not contributing. We're getting filled in with the yellow. So let's also add a different color constant, make it red. And we'll pipe that into the reflection. So we have yellow global illumination. We have red reflection. And then we can have a background be our HDR. So you can start to do some really tricky things with this node by changing the reflection, global illumination, and refraction, as well as the background for your final image. So now let's take a look at what you could do after you've got a V-Ray renderer node. You could pre-comp here. We'll just go straight into manipulating the channels. So for now, I'm going to remove the background. And I'm going to add V-Ray renderer element. I'm going to add the lighting and I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to add the global illumination. So now I can see that those channels are now appearing, global illumination and lighting. So in here I'm going to create a shuffle node. We're going to go through two different ways 
to do this. So we'll start with lighting. And in the label, I'm going to say value in. And this is going to allow me to copy paste this and have a nice little lighting label there, as well as turn on the postage stamp so I can see what layer that is visually. So duplicate that and let's change this to be reflection. Duplicate that and let's make that be specular. And then we'll add global illumination. Oop, sorry. So we've got, let's just rearrange this. Lighting, reflection, specular, and global illumination. And then to just keep this super simple, we're going to merge these with a plus. And we should get, if I didn't miss anything, the same look directly after the render V-Ray renderer node to the same as the plus. So now let's do a little organization of the scene. And then let's say, for example, I wanted to reduce the, the reflection contribution. So I can stick a grade node on there, multiply by 0.5, and you can see that that starts to go away. We can even dial that way down. And then the same thing with the global illumination. Let's multiply that way down so that it's just contributing a little bit. So how many channels you break out and the complexity of your rebuild can vary depending on your scene and what you're used to getting from the lighting department. One other V-Ray render element I wanted to cover was the V-Ray Extra Text. And we'll change that. And we'll pipe that into our scene. So we can take a look at our extra text layer. And then what's cool about this is we can pass along mats um, and make as many of these as we want and name them whatever we want. So I'm going to call it create a V-Ray Dirt. And again, these are uh, some of these are available in the V-Ray textures material. Dirt, Fresnel, P-Tex, Text Bitmap. Etc. Sampler info. So uh, with this one, I'm going to change the radius to 100 and pipe that in as my texture. And you can see we're starting to get some cool shading going on here. This is not affecting the RGBA beauty, but it is giving us an extra channel that we can manipulate later or use as a mat. So a common thing that I need as a compositor is a V-Ray Fresnel. That gives us a really cool pass. I will invert the colors so we can see it clearer. But that can give me a nice way to fall off things uh, on the side of objects. And you can change what kind of reflection, refraction, Fresnel properties with uh, with the index of refraction. So you can start to see some of the uses we can create um, with the extra text node. So let's say we've got a scene we like and we want to pre-comp it or render it out for other, other use. So we'll create a write node. And the thing we want to do about this is make sure we change the channels to all. And these are ones I've already made, so I will make a new one called Sphere Zach. So now we've got that, I can actually render that out. I'll just render one frame for now. And then we create a right node. And we can check out all the layers we have still in there, just the same as we had. Now, if you forget to change the all, you will end up with an image that is just RGB. And you won't be able to do this channel shuffling, which I'll just hook up for now so we can see that. And you can see I've manipulated the reflection and global illumination layers. 
And then the final thing is once we're happy with um, our initial settings render, we can come into the V-Ray renderer and turn on anti-aliasing. And then we can start to increase this. So we can start to get rid of noise and increase the render quality by adjusting these values. So in this video series, we've covered everything from geometry nodes to materials, material blends, bump map wrappers, applying materials to specific geometry, lighting, rendering, render elements, shuffling, and compositing a complete end-to-end -end solution for image creation within V-Ray for Nuke. Thanks for watching.